So is the way that you skate leading to pain, injury risk, and worse skating? For the majority of skaters, the answer is probably yes. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over how imbalances that come from the way that we skate and live can lead to all of these different problems. And then I'm gonna be showing you some exercises that I use with the skaters that I train to work on these imbalances and reduce that injury risk and to get them skating and feeling better. So let's get to it. Differences in strength, power, and mobility between each side of your body, excessive strength on the front of your body and weakness on the back are just some of the imbalances that the body can develop. All right, get up now and do this with me, okay? You're gonna jump from one leg and land on that same leg, and then back in the other way like that, and then you're gonna swap, do the same on the other leg. Chances are you found that one of those legs felt more stable and strong than the other. So most of us have one side of the body that feels more stable, strong, and just functions better for certain tasks. Now imbalances are totally normal and there's nothing inherently bad about them, but a lot of research does show that differences in strength and function aren't just associated with a drop in performance, AKA you skating worse, but more importantly, they're associated with things like pain, overuse injuries, and more severe injuries as well. So if imbalances are normal, why is it then that research finds all these different problems? Well, like with anything, Thing, doing too much of it is gonna create issues, no matter what it is. Even the healthy stuff like eating spinach, exercising, or smoking crack, too much of that stuff is gonna create problems and it's no different with imbalances in your body. So how do these problems kick off? Well, there are many different reasons, but one common cause is that if a certain part of your body loses its ability to function how it was designed to, or if it doesn't have the strength to function how it was designed to, it's potentially gonna offload its job to another part of the body that wasn't designed for that task. So let's take the ankle as an example. Your ankle is designed to move and flex back and forth like this nicely, no problem. And one of the reasons it does that is to absorb force. So let's say I'm jumping down, I need to be able to flex my ankles so I can absorb the force of me coming into the ground. If you've lost mobility, maybe from an ankle sprain before and you can't actually get that flex, so let's say you go to flex and it just gets locked up here, then that completely stops the ankle's ability to absorb force and it's gonna get sent to other parts of the body, AKA the knee. So over time, that added stress and force that's getting sent through the knee can lead to even further dysfunction and compensations or pain and other more serious injuries as well. So alongside that as well, even if you're skating primarily in one stance, most of the falls you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be landing first on one leg and you're not gonna know which leg that's gonna be. It's gonna be different depending on the kind of fall that you do, you know? Sometimes it'll be the back, sometimes it'll be the front. And if that leg doesn't have the strength or mobility to absorb that fall, or you don't have the same awareness over that side of your body than you do the other, then the injury risk is gonna go up as well. And it's normally these kinds of situations where it's really fast, uncontrolled movements that actually lead to those injuries. So you need to be prepared, even if you're only skating in one stance, you need to be physically prepared for these kinds of situations to actually then protect yourself from injury. All right, so why do we have imbalances? Well, there are many different reasons, but one of them is how different we use the body when we actually skate. For example, if I'm doing a nose mani, right now, most of my weight is on the front foot and the back one is just acting kind of just to keep the board in place, just to keep it locked in. So another example as well is when we push, each side of the body is doing completely different things. The front leg is just locked in place, stabilizing us as the other one swings to actually push and hit the ground. As your body adapts to pretty much anything you do, if you spend most of your time doing one thing with one side of the body and a completely different thing with the other side of the body, each side is gonna adapt in different ways to become better at the thing that it spends most of its time doing. So according to a poll that I did on Instagram, 79% of skaters crew switch less than 20% of the time and 69% do tricks only in their regular stance 80% of the time. So most of the time when these people are skating, they're using their bodies in completely different ways. Chuck in excessive sitting where you're locked in one position for extended periods of time or previous injuries that have left one side of your body just functioning worse than the other and then all of the other one-sided activities that we do throughout the entire day. It's no wonder that imbalances are gonna kick off in your body. Now, research in skating is pretty much non-existent, but somehow I found one bit of research measuring imbalances in amateurs, and then another bit of research measuring the imbalances in pros. 
And I'm not gonna lie, the results were pretty shocking. So for some of the amateurs, the difference in their ability to jump on one leg compared to the other was as much as 40%. Whereas for the pros, the difference in strength between sides was literally non-existent, which isn't the shocking bit because usually pro skaters have a really solid switch game and amateurs maybe not so much. The shocking bit is really the massive differences in the single leg jump abilities with the amateurs. Now, there wasn't many people in the study, but also from the people that I've trained, I've noticed a pretty big difference in ability between each side as well but this goes to show that not only will sorting out those imbalances help reduce injury risk but it's also probably going to help you actually skate better as well so we're naturally unbalanced but too much is what's going to lead to problems and the goal isn't to create this perfect balanced body the same on each side we're always going to have imbalances especially if you choose to skate primarily in one stance and you might even have large imbalances if you choose to do that. The most important thing is to make sure that both sides of your body can handle the intense stresses of skating by getting each side up to a baseline level of strength and function. That right there is the most important. So one of the best things that we can do to prepare each side of our body for skating and to get each side up to that baseline level of strength and function are resistance training exercises which I'm going to show you right now. So ideally you'll take these exercises and stick them into a more complete program that's got a bunch of work focusing on different kinds of imbalances that will balance out that strength and function between the front and back of your body and a load more other stuff as well. So if you're looking for a skate focus program that covers all this stuff and just gets your body prepared for skating then check out the link in the description below and that being said let's get to the exercises. So the first exercise is a split squat which is a knee dominant move. For this one we're going to set up with the knee straight under the hip at the back, the toes flicked under like that and the front knee in line with the front toes or a little bit past it. The exact distance and position is going to depend on you and your body structure so just pick a distance and setup that feels comfortable for you to go through this move. Once you've found it we're going to shift pretty much all of the weight onto this front foot, we're going to keep the foot flat on the ground with most of the pressure on the ball of the big toe and the inner heel and now we're going to push the ground away as we come up vertically and then vertically straight back down into that starting position with the knee under the hip right there. Straight back up keeping most of that weight on the front, the one at the back is just acting as a bit of a support as like a kickstand and then straight up like this. So some compensations for this one are that we either shift too much weight onto the back like that or you curve and lose that nice stack spine position. So I want you to think good stack there, keeping everything nice and solid and just leaning slightly over that front foot to keep that weight on it. Another classic compensation is letting that knee go too far in like this. That's something we want to control and we want to try and keep the knee pretty much over the middle of the foot, maybe a slight bit to the outside. So straight down like that and just controlling it throughout the whole of the exercise. Another common issue is with the setup and people set up with their foot way too far out to the side. So I want you to think almost in line, just a little bit to the side of the foot, just so you can comfortably come down with your chest right over the middle of the foot. Because if I'm over here, it's just harder for me to get that chest over. So everything, boom, straight down, aim for your middle of the chest over that foot as well and you should be good to go. Progressions for this exercise are coming down so you don't hit the knee on the ground, coming to about a millimeter above the ground like that. And then another option could be just loading it with a weight in either one hand or both hands and going down doing the exact same thing. So the next exercise is a single leg hip bridge which is a hip dominant move. For this one we're going to come straight back down and the goal is just coming up and down like this, controlling the move with the hips. So to set up you're going to have that foot that's on the ground just a little bit past the knee, you're going to have the other leg up at about 90 degrees here and we're going to be lying back down like so with your, your head comfortably on the ground. We're going to keep the foot flat on the ground and keep the pressures on the ball of the big toe and the inner heel as well and we're just going to push straight up like this until we've got a straight line from the knee all the way to the shoulders and then lower back down, tap the ground and come straight back up lower, tap and come up like that. So for this exercise we want to feel it primarily in the glutes or the batty crevice. It's common that people feel it too much in the back, in the lower back or the hamstrings when doing this move though. So two causes of that are for the hamstrings either having the feet too far forwards like this, so bringing the feet back to a position where you feel like you're really getting that glute activation or it can also be due to not keeping those right foot pressures that I spoke about. So we want ball of the big toe and inner heel as well, keeping that foot flat on the ground. So that should resolve the hamstring issue. For the lower back, it can be because people come 
up too far and they arch their back in a weird position. So to resolve this, come up and then keep going up until you feel your back. Once you feel your back kick in, come down a little bit until it turns off and this position that you've just come into now is the range of motion that I want you to go through for this exercise. So go back down and then come up into that position that you've just located and keep yourself in that range right there. Now if this exercise is too hard, what you can do is you can do double leg, boom, straight up and then do some marches in that top position and then come down. You can also do eccentrics on the one leg and then up on the two like that until you build strength and the ability to swap over to just the full single leg version. So the next exercise is a single leg pogo. We're targeting the ankles again for this one and we're just bouncing on one leg, literally like this. Super simple, trying to be nice and springy. Imagining we're bouncing on a trampoline. As you're going through those jumps, try and keep the weight primarily on the ball of the big toe. And in terms of compensations, there's not really too much that can go wrong here other than your knee caving excessively in. So again, trying to keep everything nice and in line. Also, not coming down too much as well. So it's not a squat jump. You can see that's completely different. We're trying to keep it primarily ankle dominant. So the knee is flexing just a tiny little bit, but it's mainly the ankle and foot that's working to this one. So one regression for this exercise, if it's too intense, is holding on to something like a chair or a wall. I don't know if this board's gonna be too low, so this might look like shit, but you get the idea. Just picking something that allows you to take a little bit of your body weight off the jump as you're going through it. So for the lateral bounds, we're gonna be jumping from one leg and landing on the other one, like so. I want you to think for each of the landings on this one that you're letting your joints flex. So you're letting those ankle, the ankle, knee and hip absorb the force. You're coming down and trying to land nice and soft, nice and quiet. Once you've done one side, you'll then go over and repeat for the other side, trying to land in that same position and just go between the two not moving on to the next jump until you're 100% stable. So if I'm jumping here and I'm still like, whoa, I'm not jumping back. I'm trying to land and control each jump. Some compensations here are again, the knee coming in and going all weird. So I want you to think landing with it nice and stacked over the middle of the foot. Also not letting the back kind of lose its integrity and come curl all over like this or the opposite of landing too high up like this, which can often come from you not allowing that hip to actually flex. So think allowing all of those joints to work to flex nicely with that upper body nice and stacked on top of the leg. So for the two of one down calf raise, we're gonna find something like a step or a ledge and ideally a wall out in front of it or something solid for you to hold on to. So we take stability out of the equation for this exercise. I'm gonna use my board because I don't have that. So once you've got that set up, Come and stand on the edge of the thing with the ball of the big toe just a little bit past the edge of the ledge this way. So I'm there right on the edge. I'm gonna step up with both feet pretty much under the hips for this one. And I've got my weight primarily on the ball of the big toe here. Holding onto the thing that I've got, I'm gonna come straight up. So coming all the way up and I'm gonna shift my weight onto one side and lower down all the way until I feel a nice stretch at the back of the leg. And I'm gonna put the other foot on to bring myself up and then shift back onto that side again. And we're gonna keep a bit of a rhythm going here. So we're gonna come straight up, shift down. And then as soon as I get to the bottom, come straight down again. No pause at the top either and just cycle through. So some things to avoid for this are flexing the knee too much. We wanna keep it relatively straight, tiny little bit of a flex, but we need to keep it straight so we're really hitting those ankles and not making it kind of like a weird, like squatty thing. Other compensations are either not coming down enough or not going up enough either. So really make sure you're taking yourself through that full range of motion. So progressions for this one are then gonna be going straight on to just doing a single leg. So you'll set yourself up in the exact same way. And now instead of coming up on the two, you're gonna come up and down on just the one side. So it's gonna look something like this, down all the way and then straight up and just getting that same rhythm going that we got before with the two up, one down. So another big way we can work on these imbalances is changing things around how we actually skate as well. So next video is gonna be on that. Make sure you subscribe for that one. And let me know down in the description below what you thought of this video. Let me know how you get on with the exercises and I'll link as well the MBD program down in the description. And that's it for this one. So until next time, peace.